Okay, this is a quick video on doing Illuminance renderings uh, or lighting simulation inside of Revit using cloud rendering technology. So to do these, I've just built a really small, simple little box here with a curtain wall on one side. So I've got a ceiling, a floor, three walls, and a curtain wall. Uh, if we would look at that in plan view, you can see it's it's roughly 800 square feet, so a fairly small space. And I'm going to go ahead and delete these two camera views, and we will sort of build this up from the very beginning um, to discuss how we can set up some really simple lighting level values, some simulation values inside of Revit. So the first thing we need to do is establish our latitude and longitude. And to do that, we need to create a location for our project or set a location for our project. So underneath Manage, we can go to Location. And for this particular project, I believe I'm already set to where we did some light readings um, using a more manual method of light reading. Uh, let's see here. It's actually not quite the right spot. Let's see if I can drag that to a better location. So once I ha I put in an address, like let's say 900 North Benton Avenue. So I'm already in Springfield, Missouri, uh, where my university is. We are looking at um, 900 North Benton Avenue. That is the address for the university. And given that we're doing light readings and need latitude and longitude as our primary information, um, we don't need to get super specific, but I can actually drag that right on top of where those light readings were taken, which is on top of this building. Actually, they weren't taken on top of the building, but at this building location. Okay, so let's set that as our specific location. We're going to zoom out to the point that we can see our weather stations because those will be used uh, in terms of sky data. So let's select the airport one right here. Um, I'm not sure if that's closer or not. It looks like it's about the same distance, um, but that's the airport. I like the airport. So let's go with OK. So at this point in time, now I've got my latitude and longitude set, and I want to build a handful of views that are going to create lighting levels using cloud rendering um, from the interior of this space. So I do want to look at sort of an overview first before I actually invest time in the cloud rendering. So I'm going to do a few things with the location set. I'm going to turn sun path on and I'm going to turn shadows on. So this essentially gives me a sun path that I can move around um, given times of the year. So let's set this to June 16th, sure. And let's set this to 215 and you can see that just uh, in looking at this really really quickly I don't have a lot of light coming in to the space um, and I want to get some drama in my values so I'm going to change the time to 515 June 16th and I you can see I get direct light coming pretty far into the space okay now in terms of how Revit works this time and date is specific to this specific view. My location is established globally for everything that happens inside of Revit, but the time and date are view specific. So once I set up a new camera, I need to make sure that I am also setting up, if I want to do something comparative, uh, similar time and date or same time, same date. So let's go into my level one plan and I am going to put in a new camera and establish it right here in the corner. I'm going to expand my view just a little bit in all directions so I can see more of the floors. So this is a little bit like a fisheye lens on a camera now. Um, it's distorting my view a little bit, but I get more data, so that's what I want. If I turn on shade and shadow, you'll notice I'm not really getting any results at all, and that's because I do not have the same time that was set up in this 3D view for this 3D view. So let's rename this to um, Corner View Light Stem 1. 
Let's go to our display settings, graphic display options. Let's turn shadows on so I can see them. Oh, those are already on. And let's go to lighting. And then let's set up the sun location based on our actual location. So I can do that by checking still. And then let's set our time of year, which was June 16th. At, I believe I was 5 p.m. So it's set 5.30. And we should see similar shadows coming way into that floor plan now. Okay. And okay. And I'm seeing absolutely nothing. So that's not right. Something went wrong here. Let's go to graphics display settings one more time. Shadows are good. Lighting. In session, still. Five thirty AM, five thirty PM. There we go. That was a problem. The sun's in the exact wrong side, so my curtain wall is facing west. Five thirty AM, sun would be in the east. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Sometimes it's nice to make mistakes, right? Um, okay. This is what I want to send through for a lighting simulation rendering. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to go to View, Cloud Rendering, and Render in Cloud. Continue. So on my cloud rendering settings, I first want to verify that I'm rendering the correct view, right? So this cloud simulation rendering, I want to do an illuminance rendering not a still image but an illuminance rendering i am going to use the date and time from the view right because that's already established where my shade and shadow is that's what i want to look at sky model um, for the class what we've been using is the clear sky and the first rendering that i'm going to do is i i'm going to set this illumination value to automatic so what this is going to do is it's going to build a gradient from zero to however many maximum foot candles are and try and even that for even that out for me automatically. Okay, once I have my base rendering done, from there on I can set my low end and high end as known values and keep those consistent for all of the lighting studies so that I'm comparing a similar chart, similar colors across all renderings. Okay, so um, I'm going to let it email me when the rendering is done and say start rendering. So let's do one additional view of this. Let's do sort of a view looking down so I can get sort of a floor plan reading. So if I go to my east elevation view, I can come in with a, another camera and select this top looking down. And let's change my views just to make sure my camera is actually in the in the space, which it's not. So let's drag that in. And then we can look at that specific view. And let's spread out my view angle again so I can see the base of each wall and the entirety of the floor. So it's a little bit of a hack to kind of get a floor plan view on um, illuminance values. So let's just right click and rename this plan light sim. So same process. We would go cloud rendering, render in cloud. We are going to set this again to illuminance. The sky model is clear. Back to location and time. Let's make sure we use a date from view. Uh, which brings me back to the point. I'm not sure I've set a date and time for this view yet. So let's cancel out of that. And let's double check again. Shadows on. Shadows on. Oh, hadn't done that yet. Graphic display options. My shadows are turned on. My lighting should be set to still. And again, let's set this to five, this time on June 16th. Apply, there we go. Okay. 
and OK. Let's try that one more time. Full of mistakes today. Plan light sim, illuminance, date and time from view, sky model clear, legend automatic, and start rendering. So both of those are now running um, in the cloud. And I will know that they're done. I, you know, right now I'm seeing um, about 10 or 15 minutes to get my results back. But we've just run a few of these. So I can kind of show you what um, these look like. Just drag and drop this across. So um, once I log into my Autodesk account, you are going to see um, your projects show up. So this is a project that I've been working through. You can see I've got a few things that are rendering right now. But uh, I can look at, this is the floor plan view, different time of day. Um, but you can see the plan, you can see light coming in. We set up the same plan to do an actual rendering of the materiality. Change the materials, uh, again, to a sort of a white glossy wall. And you can see there's just a slight difference, not a massive difference, but a slight difference in terms of lighting levels when you change the materials. So that does um, factor in for sure. Let's go back one more to our perspective views. So same thing, there is a rendering of the space and looking at those in this case, we put a few wall sconces in so you can actually see a little bit of a subtle impact with the lights across without the sconces in place. Uh, and the different materiality. So those are the types of things that you're going to get coming together in terms of reading. And again, I've got foot candles right here. So this was using um, the base automatic. So it was setting my minimum foot candles at 41, my maximum at 4,300. So one of the edits that was made on the later runs was setting zero foot candles to 5,000. So we get a smoother gradient and we get a little bit more definition right here along those blues where our foot candles are quite low. Now again, remember, just because I'm getting closer to a zero reading on the foot candles doesn't mean that's going to show up as black. In fact, we can kind of balance that with looking at what our renderings look like from the process. Um, but it does give us an indication that our foot candle readings are going to be very low as we start approaching from those other corners. That's about it. Um, just takes a few minutes to get these renderings coming in. Um, my guess is some of these are just a few minutes out. Um, obviously, I'm not going to wait for those to show up. That's why I had a few things pre-cooked. Um, yeah, work away on this stuff. It's really useful information, both for your design process and for your clients.